We're back with the breakfast and plus TV Africa. Jide Johnson joins us this morning for Off the Press. Uh, Jide, it's good to have you join us. Compliment of the season. Okay. I hope I'm getting my Christmas there. My Christmas wish is fulfilled with both of you. <laughs> Thank you, Jide Johnson. Wish you a compliment to the season and uh, great to have you join us this morning. Well, let's quickly look at the Daily Trust newspaper, IPOP, Food Traders Boycott, Southeast as Nerdiners Flee. That's boldly written on the Daily Trust newspaper. Underneath, prices of perishable items or the food stuff soar over blockade. We have lost at least 100 persons in one week. That's what group is saying. Comply with stay-at-home order to avoid danger. Hausa community leader is saying. Umahi declares war on separatist leader. Ekba. Uh, these are the riders you find underneath that caption. EFCC remit 136 billion naira, recovers 30 billion from suspended uh, accountant general. Food inflation increases to 24% as festive season sets in. I asked myself what's responsible for all of that. And then PC oil theft, onslaught, yielding result as production hits 1.59 barrels daily in December. Okay. INEC, 53 attacks recorded on our facilities. DSS warns against commodity price hikes. Really, what's, 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 what's with DSS and all of this? Um, train crushes women driving across rail line. It was also another big story. And blasphemy, reaction as Kanu cleric sentenced to death. These are some of the headlines we'll take this morning on the Daily Trust. Let's go straight to the Nation newspaper. Uh, some interesting headlines on the front page of the nation. Start with the big one there. EFCC recovers 30 billion naira from Accountant General Idris. Uh, agency remits 136 billion naira in seven months. Politicians under watch. Okay. Uh, more from the paper. Rising food prices push inflation to 21.5%. Four seven percent. That's a few percentage points. It was, I think, twenty one point zero seven or zero nine percent in October. Uh, Buhari, Tinubu, Sonwolu, others mourn Seriki. Um, we just talked about Biden praises Buhari for deepening democracy. That's in the U.S. Africa summit holding currently in Washington D.C. Banks roll out new naira notes. Adelike Oyetola trade war or words rather over four hundred and seven point three two billion naira debt. Nigeria secures $9 billion dollar loan. <laughs> uh, market says behind petrol scarcity, high pump price says Pangasan. Uh, okay, there's still accusations and counter accusations. Oye Banji approves recruitment of primary school teachers. Uh, stories on front page of the nation. Well, let's take a quick look at the Guardian newspaper this morning. Banks ration new notes as circulation trickles. Underneath payout old notes, complain of limited supply. And Mephili writes reps and defers or defers appearance. Lawmakers push someone to next Tuesday about a resident yet to see new Naira notes. <laughs> Kofi, have you seen the new Naira note? Uh, yesterday, I didn't use the ATM. I was cashless throughout. Uh, this morning, I just might go do some withdrawals and uh, I would like to lay my hands on them. Yeah, I want to do, an, I want to do a social experiment. Unless you can give me some, you know, so I can... We'll talk about that after the show. All right. Uh, banks in Kaduna, Kano, limit payment to 2,000 and 3,000. Um, but there's a lot of drama that just go on <laughs> in the course of all of this. Adelike alleges Oyetola left 407.32 billion naira debts, got more loans after losing Guba polls. And we say it's because we practice money politics. Was that an excuse? A boy, you can never be part of Biafra, says Governor Mahi. It will take not 40 years to catch up with South, says World Bank. What does that even mean? Again, uh, we'll we just quickly run through this as we move away. Biden invites AU to join G20 and plans to visit Africa in 2023 you know so I, I i seem to have a big problem where there's always a reference to saying you're going to africa when you say you go to africa are you visiting the entire continent or you're going to a specific country in the continent because there's always if you're coming to nigeria someone says i'm going to africa come on africa is a continent 
And in Africa, you have Nigeria, you have all the African countries, maybe in the West, in the North or in the South. All right, uh, interesting one, Mercy. Just take the first story on the punch and we'll look at the others as time goes on. Banks run out of new Naira, demand soars, cashiers ration new notes, lenders a lot 100,000 Naira per teller in banks. Lenders a lot 100,000 Naira per teller in banks. Suspicious customers snub new Naira notes as local traders reject new currency. Court declines to stop CBN withdrawal policy. Mayfield meets reps on Tuesday. I said it. I said it. That you know, people might reject some of this money because it looks like it's a fake version of the old Naira because of the similarity. Jenny Johnson, good morning to you once again. What are your thoughts on this? The banks are running out of the new Naira notes. Is this a trick by the CBN uh, to mask a sort of economic crisis that is coming? So make it look as if it's because of uh, hiccups in new Naira notes. Because I know that. Uh, some economies, when things go when things go south, you know, like it happened in Argentina some years ago, you can't get your money out of the bank. People are queuing for hours. There's no money. And um, what are your thoughts on this? And we hear that they some traders are rejecting uh, the new currency. Now you see the as of red someone the central bank of not, and the central bank of not delayed its appearance. Just imagine the as of red. United States Congress, summoning the chairman of the Federal Reserve, and is telling them it cannot appear. It shows how weak some of our institutions are. It also shows how these various people managing the true representative of the people who have said it that um, the courts are not the true representative of the people. Um, they, the, the Congress is the true representative of the people because these are the people that are directly elected on constituent basis. And some are people have direct relationship or understanding of who they are sending to the Congress. As far as I'm concerned, you have a central bank governor who at the beginning of this year has a presidential aspiration, though he denied. But the evidences are all around, around, around us. And I'm sure some of those People that are inviting him must have attended one or two meetings, which he must have organized during that period. This Naira note um, change and the rest of it, you, we should listen to a lot of commentators with respect to their, their comment. But there's one thing that is very, very common with the present leadership of the central bank. Whatever they plan to do, they go ahead to do it. When you are changing the note, why are you why are you rationing the note? Is it are we doing food rationing? Now you're giving a limited deadline, and you do everything as much as possible to ensure that there is proper and adequate circulation of this of this currency. Just imagine me going to bank and someone is limiting my withdrawal to two thousand or three thousand. What would you use two thousand or two thousand to buy? With the current rate, with the current inflation rate, and with the current um, rate of the of the value of the naira compared to other currencies, even in Africa, not to talk about um, foreign foreign currencies. So, as far as I'm concerned, and then not even at this particular period in time, when you know this yield type period where a lot of families engage in one form of expense or the other, this is the period that you are rationing the distribution of the new naira. Are notes that you have created and you are introducing at the big, at the at, at the end of the year, not the beginning of the year, not the middle of the year. In actual sense, the normal accounting procedure before we change it is usually is usually first of April of this year to 30th of March of, of, of next year. So I don't I just I just don't understand as far as um, um, the central bank is concerned, as far as whatever policies they've done with respect to our monetary our monetary policy. And it seems to be overboard. Just like CBN and just like NNPC, we have institutions that have assumed greater role even than the representative of the people that believes that they are not accountable to anybody. They are super institutions that are bigger than the major institution recognized by the constitution to be in charge of the affairs of the state. That's the legislature the executive and the judiciary. They are component part of the executive and they do as if the other parts, other 
other organs of government have no control over them. God will help us out in Nigeria. Salaries across you know, different states of the federation. Jide, can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. So, yes, on the Guardian newspaper, there are concerns about unpaid salaries and arrears across different states. For instance, in Imo State, teachers are yet to be paid two and a half, uh, you know, years of salary. That's uh, the report. And in Delta State, teachers received old salary in Rivers. Teachers not promoted in seven years. And in Ondo State, drive, I mean, teachers are actually driving, uh, you know, cars. I don't want to begin to mention for the sake of publicity just to survive. So they're engaged in, you know, transportation business, converted their cars, you know, to a means of survival. And in Ekiti State, uh, they owe four months salary. Uh, Rufus Giwa Polytechnic owes 11 months of salary. So in, in the local panels, a lot of people are expecting to have, you know, a, a very wonderful time with their family. Some people would say uh, dirty December, but really, what are your thoughts? Well, um, it's very clear that we still need to do more. You have a situation in River State where teachers have not been paid for seven months or um, Promoted. Um, I can't actually put uh, what you just said. Um, promoted. And then you have, I've not been promoted. Thank you very much. I've not been promoted for, for, for seven years. Seven, one, two, three, four. That means that throughout UK's tenure, there's no promotion. And the guy is busy doing commissioning of a flyover, having a band singing his praises. And then um, the, the media is busy uh, blowing his trumpet with respect to him fighting, fighting, fighting injustice, whereas he's a perpetrator of injustice within his own system. Because I don't imagine how someone will work for seven years and it will not be promoted. That's, that's, that's the one for, for, for Wiki. Uh, let's go to other states and talk about how teachers have not been. I recall that we used to have a problem with, 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 with the teacher's salary, that primary school teachers to go and strive. Until that issue was resolved under our and just administration with the salaries of the teachers, primary school teachers to be precise, being the first line charge that is deducted from whatever allocation that goes to the local government. And we need to do the same. How would you not pay a teacher and respect a, a good educational system? What type of future are you building where the teachers are not properly motivated to teach, instruct, and um, and discipline the student in a way that they will be useful for themselves in the future and they will be useful for the society in the future. And, and it cuts across, across the board. How do they go to bed? How? That's the question. But, but J.D. Johnson, do, don't you think that this might be a revenue challenge? You know, especially when we know what's going on with the Federation account. I mean, we've been struggling with the source of, uh, source of earning. What is the revenue what challenge? You? When, well, the revenue challenge, for example, in River State, when the governor appointed 200,000 each that have been paid. What is the revenue challenge when the governor has a lot of cars in his entourage? What is the revenue challenge is that when you go to the office of the governor, you see a lot of duplication of rules and offices, sometimes triplication or quadruplication of offices. You see, it's about, it's about management, it's about setting your priorities. Mercy, you and I don't live above our means. We know our salary. And then we plan based on our salary. We don't extend beyond what we know we have. If we do that and we live in debt, it means that we have to cut some certain expense in order to meet up with whatever loans or relief that we might have sought from somewhere else. And that's why, you see, these governors, they collect foreign loans, foreign loans to feed into their ostentatious lifestyle. And I think we need to throw more light. What right do they have to campaign to seek election when salaries of the civil servants have not been paid? Then how many are the civil servants? How many? If you are talking about revenue generation, well, the, the, basic, the basic reason you come into public service is to help to solve problems, not for you to go every month cap in hand to the federal government for federal allocation. These teachers that, okay, 
look at in 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 the state now the governor has approved the recruitment of primary teachers as he have yeah, as he as he made a presentation before the state house of assembly as he made budget for them where is the resources to 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 engage these teachers where is it going to come from but you see people just think that the easiest way for me to do is on test election and then i go into the office because we don't scrutinize them with respect to what what and how they are going to go about what they want to do. The race for 2022 has started. And just look at the type of questions we are asking. And just look at the type of uh, responses, presidential campaign, uh, spokesperson of presidential campaign. Just look at the banters and what have you they are throwing into, into the public domain. Issues that are of no relevance to Nigerian. To the, to, to, to the Nigerian populace, they are not dealing with issue of how we are going to solve the problem of security, how we are going to solve the problem of education, how we are going to solve the problem of poverty and empower the people, and how we are going to focus on developing our infrastructure. There's a particular way in which we are talking about inflation, commodity price being on the increase on the high side. Why? Because for you to move your goods and services, I was in Cardinal about some weeks ago. I could have bought onions in Cardinal and bring it back to Lagos. Now, when you look at the price of onions I want to buy in Cardinal, which is relatively, relatively, relatively cheaper, and you add the transportation cost to it that I use for the logistics, yeah, it's, almost, it's, almost, it's, almost, it's almost the same. But imagine if the rail system is functioning. We have a comprehensive rail network that does not only move passengers, but it moves goods and services. I could buy it and cargo it back to Lagos. So there are things that we need to ask them with respect to what they want to do in solving a problem. Solving problem does not require rocket science. But what is, you know what these people are interested? They are just interested in the title, the governor of this, the governor of that, and then without putting on any thinking cap with respect to how to solve problems. Even some of them, some of them, till date, they don't have any certificate. We have elected governors that have no certificates. We have elected governors that have claimed to have gone to schools that didn't go to any school, and there are no consequences for them committing perjury, lying under oath. People that have no capacity to govern this state, to govern this nation, and they parade themselves and they use the media platform to deceive the people by using campaign rhetoric to say we make life better. You make life better, fantastic. That's a fantastic statement. How? How? It's the how question we need to ask. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to solve the security problem. How? I'm going to solve the education problem. When I become president, there will not be an assault strike. How are you going to do it? It's very clear. The labor of the foolish, where is every one of them? For they know what to do, but the most important thing is how? And it's a critical question. In the five W's and H, and we seem not to be asking them the question, how? How are you going knowing what to do is the strategy how to go about it is the tactics is the various steps and action sequence you are going to take to solve the problem but all they've been telling us is the strategy i'm going to do this and tell us the tactics how how we are going to make nigeria work some have been parading themselves to make nigeria work as lagos is working and i ask anybody is lagos working can you pick your car and travel to anywhere in Lagos in record time? You know how many how, how many businesses are destroyed due to due to oh. travel time, unpredictability of travel time. Mr. Johnson, you're not making those of us who are in Lagos feel any better about our day. <laughs> you know, sometimes they wait no, no, to, to no, no, cope no, no. Because they with, with this. Because they use sweeping generalities. <laughs> it's, 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 it's painful. They use sweeping generalities to say, okay, we make Nigeria better as. Right. I'm asking somebody, is it the infrastructure? Is it the road transport system? Is, what, is, what is it? At, at least the second Niger Bridge is open. Jenny yeah, Johnson, we're out of time. So, <laughs> we have to go. Is the Fort Mainland Bridge, as, as well as they will open the Fort Mainland Bridge in Lagos. <laughs> Jide, we have to go now and at this point uh, we have been prompted to leave. We look forward to sharing your thoughts as we coast it down to 2023. Thank you so much for always being with us. It's, it's, a it's, it's a pleasure to be with you, Kofi, on the plus and um, Messi on the double plus <laughs> right on plus TV. We just hope that the Lord will plus, we add plus to every 
one of us and our also. Uh, and amen. Our listeners amen. And viewers all over the world. <laughs> Thank you. We'll say we'll say a big amen to that, won't we? <laughs> uh, Thank you very much, uh, I'm J.D. Johnson, and have a fantastic weekend. It's always great to end the week with you, um, always uh, lively and thrilling. We'll look at what's happening in, in parts of Nigeria as far as the elections are concerned and uh, democracy. Uh, the Nigeria police force earlier said that some state governors are threatening democracy um, in their states. You know, they have a way of going under the radar because everybody's looking at the president. But we'll zero in on River State when we come back. All we can say for now is, as they sweet us, it depends. Let's quickly take that break and <laughs> we'll when we return, the show continues. Please stay with us.